Alright, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, let's give all praise, honor, and glory to our uh, power, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to my other apostle, Great Millstone, who rule and teach well. Shalom. It's Brother Kawan from the Great Millstone Dallas Camp coming at you with another lesson today in the spirit of Pai Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. You know, this is going to be over um, a dream I had uh, last night, you know. It was it was quick, but it was very, very crucial, you know. But before we get that, uh, let's go to Slakia. Let's turn my... this back on real quick. Yeah, first Peter's chapter four. No verse seventeen. First Peter's chapter four and verse seventeen. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high. Alright? And the house of the most high is not the dwelling place in the heavens. The house of the most high that is talking about here. It's talking about his people, man. Alright? Because you know, as it says in Jeremiah 30, first chapter, as I was reading earlier, the Lord is going to write the laws, statutes, and commandments in the inward parts of the Israelites, man, in those new bodies that's talked about in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, when we see the Lord as he is, as it's talked about in 1 John the third chapter, all right, when the Lord and our Savior, how shy, comes back into this earth, man, into this realm, to receive the elect unto himself, man. As he said he would in John 14 chapter. All right. Middle of verse 17. And if it was first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? All right. The end of them that, that, don't, that do not obey the gospel of the Most High is going to be death, man. Through many different types of plagues. But we're going to fo focus on one plague on this lesson because the dream I'm going to tell you is the last trump, man. With the last plague. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly in the sinner appear? So me getting that scripture of verse 18, is going you gonna understand why I got it. So let's go back here real quick, you know, so you can get the gist in the image. Alright. So in the in the dream that I had last night, uh not last night, but two nights ago. Um, I was just walking through a city. It wasn't downtown Dallas or any of that, at least of what I could see, of what I normally see downtown. Um, and then I saw the the ICBM nuclear missiles being shot off, you know. And uh, the next thing I saw was the missile exploding and seeing the mushroom cloud and that destruction destructive wind coming from off, off the uh, mushroom cloud and I was engulfed by it you know and then nothing happened to me I was still alive you know and it wasn't just me walking through the sea it was other people there with me but they were screaming and hollering and they were burning man and then more missiles just kept flying they didn't stop they didn't stop exploding. Mushroom clouds didn't stop popping up, man. But I, and I, but I started to praise. You know, the first thought that went to my mind when the first one hit was like, damn. You know what I, what I've been doing this whole time for Yahweh Hashem Shai, it wasn't good enough, man. That's what it wasn't. It wasn't enough. I didn't do enough. That was my first initial thought. <laughs> you know, you know, you could say doubt. Or shit like that. But then uh once I saw the first missile didn't have effect on me, I was like, okay, I'm still alive. Uh, but people everybody else is burning, you know. And uh as the missiles kept flying and 
I started to praise you, Hab Hashem Shai, you know, for for keeping me alive. And I was and I was calling on you, Hab Hashem Yahweh Shai, Babu Kashai, Babu Kashai, you Hab Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know, don't let me, don't let me die down here, man. Please, man, Babu Kashai, Babu Kashai, you know, help me, you know, save me, you know. And uh, the Lord heard my prayers, you know. The chariots, the chariot, man, bro. When I say chariots, I mean chariots flooded the skies, man. And I send it up, and the dream cut off, man. You know? Now that I'm really thinking about it, you know, really heavy like that, and I'm not saying, like, I wasn't thinking about it heavy because it obviously prompted me to do a lesson on it. But, man, bro, at that time, if you not, man, if you how about Shemel Shah not with you, man, Lord gone, man. You're just going to be out there, you know. But nevertheless, let's get to these scriptures. This is Second Edris, chapter 16. And I'm going to start at verse 8. The mighty Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, sendeth the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath. And who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings. And who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? Which is just going into the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai appears, it's already going to be missiles flying. World War Three going to be been started. People are going to already be getting chipped. You know, plagues before the ICBM nuclear missiles are already going to be half passed or still going on at that time. You know, and uh. When it tells you about the thunders and the lightnings, that's how the the entrance of our Lord and the Savior, Yahweh Bashim Shai, is gonna enter this atmosphere, man. It tells you that it expounds more on that in Habakkuk the third chapter, man. A very good read. Uh verse ten, he shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? Now, if you read Second Edges 13th chapter, you will, you will get a vivid understanding and an image will pop in your head as well. When you read verse 11, man, it said the Lord shall threaten and who shall not utterly be beaten to powder at his presence, man. That's talking about the chariots of, of the Most High, which you people call UFOs, all right, which is just the technology of the Heavenly Father. Um, it's lucky. Um. I lost my train of thought because my screen went dark to lock you. But yeah, those are the chariots. That's the technology of the Heavenly Father, man. All right. Now, those, those are not make-believe. Those are very real <laughs> vehicles of destruction, if you will, man. In salvation, first and foremost, man. Verse 12. The earth quaketh and the foundation thereof. The sea arises up with waves from the deep. And the ways of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. So like I was just stating, you know, that's talking about the entrance when he comes into his realm. For strong is his right hand. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the right hand of the heavenly father Yahweh that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And okay. That bow right there is talking about those nuclear missile silos, man. Okay. And the arrows are the missiles. If you put an arrow and a missile side by side, you will see how similar they look. The prophets of old didn't know what they were seeing per se. You know, they were not they were not in the time in this time. So they didn't know what the hell no ICBM nuclear missile was. Okay. But we know what they are because we're in this time. All right. And the Lord has put the spirit back on us to to uh, to bring these things out, man, to reveal them. Because it's that time. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. All right. So the Lord. <laughs> oh, let's continue. The fire is kindled and shall not be shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth, man. All right. So the Lord is going to set damn near the whole world on fire, man. It's not the inner inner parts of the world like you people believe, some of you anyway. 
that believe in that hell doctrine, that's not a real place, man. Okay? Because it tells you in Revelation that death and hell was thrown into the lake and fire. So, so what is that talking about, you know? That's a rhetorical question. Because I, I know, and brothers like-minded me know what that means, man. All right? And anyone else that's been learning from the men of Great Millstone, we know what that means, man. And it's showing the hell ain't talking about no fiery place under the ground, you know? So let's get my next scripture. This is Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble in the in the day that cometh shall burn them up, said Yahweh of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay? We're just going further into nuclear destruction, man, because that's what I saw in my, in my in that in that dream, man. In that vision, if you will, because that's exactly how it's gonna be in the in the in the end of America, man. AKA of Babylon the Great, according to the scriptures, man. Let's get let's get some more edification on that. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. One of my favorite scriptures when it comes talking about ICBM nuclear missiles and destruction, man, because it gives you to a T what's happening, man. Because it's it this verse right here tells you it really cuts it really, really cuts that hell doctrine, man. Because it, it's showing you that these people are burning from their bodies. Not from their souls, man. Okay, because people t the the hell doctrine is that you that you sin and you go to hell and your spirit and, and your spirit burn. It's, the the scripture says your 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 spirit is on like it onto a fire, man. So how can a fire burn a fire? What sense does that make? You know. So that makes zero sense. That's why it's not true. If it don't make no sense, it's not true, man. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. All right. All the people. All the people that's talking about the that's talking the Jerusalem that is talking about is the remnant of the nation of Israel. Okay. It's not talking about all of Israel. All right. It's talking about the heathen that have fought up against the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And how do we know that? Because this as we as we continue to read, it's going into the seventh trump, man. So this this, this Jerusalem that it's talking about is the remnant that is talked about in Isaiah tenth chapter said tells you in Isaiah tenth chapter that only a remnant shall return unto Yahweh, man. Okay. And Jeremiah he prophesied around the time of the the ancient Babylonian Empire. All right, when they were in in uh in rule, okay. So just like Jeremiah was back then preaching in Babylon, we back here in that same stead, like old prophets of old, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, you know, Daniel prophesying in the time of Babylon, man. Okay. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouths, man. Okay. That that is that is to the T of what will happen to you during a nuclear blast, man. A few years ago before I knew the truth when I was a younger man, in which I'm still very young, uh I watched a documentary of um of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, man. And those were just atomic bombs. Those weren't nuclear bombs. But when they played the doc, as I was watching the documentary, it was showing how people melted and just turned into soot, you know, ash powder, as the scriptures say, when uh, those missiles had blasted off in that vicinity, man. All right. Those people that were directly below the blast. They weren't nothing but just black soot marks on the pavement, man. The ones that were look that that were a little bit farther away, what they what was just described in Zechariah fourteen and twelve, is exactly what happened to those Moabites, all those Chinese, uh, Slaki, those are Ammonites, 
the Ammonites, so-called Japanese people, during the time of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So how much more now, almost 100 years later, where technology has far advanced above an atomic bomb? Right now we're do, dealing with nuclear fission, all right, which covers a bigger, bigger radius and is way more hot, all right? It's going to be way more destructive. Is Revelations uh, chapter 19 and verse, uh, I think I'm going to start at just get this verse in verse 20. It's, it's what I want at the, uh, at the end of it. Let's see. It's locked it. Let me get one second. Yeah, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. Uh, if you read this this chapter, it's going into our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai, whom you see on the screen. Just a depiction, of course, just a picture of this man in, in green linen with gold, with the, with the golden belt, belt buckle, with the white woolly hair and the dark bronze skin, man. As it tells you in Revelation, the first chapter, Revelation 19 chapter goes into our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shai, coming back into this realm to put the heathen, which are these other nations outside of the nation of Israel, which the nation of Israel consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, along with you speckled bird Israelites, which speckled bird Israelites are Israelites that look like the heathen nation on the outside, but their lineage, their bloodline goes back onto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, but this uh, this chapter goes into our Lord and our Savior Yahushua coming back and putting the heathen under his feet, man. Okay, verse uh, Revelation 19 and 20. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which which with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. All right, mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. The image of the beast is the ancient Roman Empire, man. Okay. And then uh, NATO and the EU is the beast system, which Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is that whore that rides upon that beast, man. Okay. These these both were, uh, were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, man. So it's talking about the people that worship, that took the mark of the beast, and that worshipped the image of the beast, man. Okay? These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, man. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's talking about this right here in Revelation 21 and verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right. Which is talking about ICBM nuclear destruction, man. Okay. It's not talking about anything else, you know. Let's get a uh, slot in. I believe I know where else I was going. I wanted another precept. I think I know where it's at. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, give me one second, uh, Akim. Uh, Revelations. I know what I, what I had. Uh, yes, I want, I want Revelations 11. And... Yeah, I'm going to end it out right there. Revelation chapter 11 and verse uh, verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And then their enemies beheld them. Now, as you see right here, if you can see this gold, this gold thing right here, 
um, that is, it, it looks like a thing, but that's actually a chariot of Israel in the painting that a brother painted. You know, I ascended in a dream. I ascended up to heaven. All right. In a, in a chariot. It tells you here in verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. Which that's either going to be Yahweh or Yahweh Shai saying that in the, in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew tongue. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, which that cloud is talking about a chariot of Israel. What I saw in my dream, man. Me ascending up into that chariot after I praised to Yahweh Bashim Shai to save me, man. You know, to not forget my works that I had did for for, for Yahweh Bashim Shai, man. And ultimately to have mercy on, upon me, you know, because we in debt unto the Heavenly Father and His Son. We are in debt. So we our ultimate goal is to receive mercy for my power, man. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. In the same hour was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earth, <laughs> the same hour was, was there a great earthquake? All right. Now, once you read Revelations of 18th chapter, it will tell you that Babylon the Great, which is aka America, will be destroyed in approximately one hour, man, once the Lord enters the atmosphere to start destroying this place with the chariots and the ICBM nuclear missiles, man. It's only going to take one hour to destroy this place. And there was a great earthquake. That earthquake was caused by the ISBM nuclear missiles. And the tenth part of the city fell. The tenth part of the city is the ten FEMA regions that's divided in the land of America. All right. <clears throat> Slain of men, 7,000. Not actually 7,000 men. Seven just means completion. So it's going to be a complete amount of slain of the Lord. Because it tells you in Isaiah 66 chapter that the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right. It tells you in uh, Revelation 14 chapter around the 20th verse. The blood shall come up even to the, the horse's bridle. That's not necessarily literal, but it means that it's just a figure of speech. It's going to be a lot of death out here. Second Andrew 16 chapter tells you it's going to be it's going to be a uh, great mornings and great death, man. All right. Because this world is filled with nothing but wickedness. And the Lord ain't with it. And the remnant were affrighted. That same remnant that's talked about in Isaiah the 10th chapter. Were affrighted and gave glory to Yahweh. Our power of heaven, man. All right. So as I was ascending up into that, that chariot, man. As soon as I got there, I was going to be praising Yahweh by Shem Shai for, for, for delivering me out of that calamity, man. For not letting... Everything that I had done for Yahweh Bashim Shai to, to have been for not to not for Yahweh Bashim Shai ultimately showing mercy on me, man. You know. So so it'd behoove us all, man, to continue in this thing of ours, man. If we want to receive grace and mercy from our power, you know. Revelation chapter twenty and verse uh and verse six. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. All right. Thou blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah chapter 14. It's like here. Yeah. Chapter 14 and verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So when the ice beam nuclear missiles get shot off, this and that, this and that, and we and the elect get, you know, saved into those chariots, soon we're going to come down out of those chariots and we're going to just take over the world, man. As it says in Daniel, the saints shall take the kingdom. We're going to take over the world, man. The Lord going to set us in our own land by the way of giving us the new bodies and delivering us into the chariots, man. Okay? So this is what this is talking about. 
and the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. As strangers, it's not talking about no heathen man. Okay, it's talking about it's talking about Israelite foreigners. Okay, this is uh back in Revelation chapter twenty and verse six, and I'm gonna end it out. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. All right, we just broke that down in Isaiah fourteen chapter. First resurrection is those of the remnant that get to walk into the kingdom. Okay, the rest of our people, the two thirds of our people that's gonna die here in America and around the world, they're gonna come back in the kingdom as newborn children. Let's continue. The I'm gonna reread it. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first re first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but, but they shall be priests of the Most High, and of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, and shall reign with him a thousand years. That doesn't mean that we're going to reign a thousand years and fall out of power. A thousand years means the heathen is going to go into captivity for a thousand years, man. And then they're going to be let go. Esau, Edom, you're going to be extinct because we're going to gather you up together after that thousand year time period and utterly burn you, okay? But yeah, man, that was a, that was a vision that I had got from Yah about Shemel Shah. I really usually get visions maybe once or twice a year, <laughs> you know? But it was, it was very pleasing, man. And Lord willing, that happens for me, you know? Uh... And it happens to you, to you brothers and sisters as well, that honestly, earnestly believe in our power, Yahweh Bashim Shai. But that was all I had for that lesson. Lord willing, that was edifying and faith boosting, man. With that, I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakak with Dash. Double honor to my elder apostle, great millstone, rule one, and teach well. Shalom. On to the next one.